In this video, I'm going to introduce you to an incredibly important idea, which is the formal elements of game design. This, this term comes from the Game Design Workshop by Tracy Fullerton. I think the best way to start thinking about the elements is to actually use them. So what if we make a game? We're going to make a type of game that's called a race to the end game. This is very common in Shoots and Ladders, in Candyland, in the game of life. We're going to start by drawing a path. You could make any kind of path you want. It could be geometric or it could be sneaky. Something you might want to notice though is in all of these, they have sections for moves. So you're going to want to be sure that you include sections in your path. This path seems to be more of a staircase at this moment. And the snaky one turns out to be a little bit easier. Next, we have to figure out a way for people to move along our, our beautiful path. So perhaps it's a dice roll where you move as many spaces as the numbers on the dice. But that's just pure chance. And pure chance can be pretty boring Think of Candyland. So uh, answering a trivia question, like the very popular game Trivial Pursuit. In some games, everybody moves. Um, in some, the person behind moves. There's a wonderful game I would definitely recommend for anybody, which is called Patchwork. And Patchwork uses both person who behind moves and also pass and gain currency. It's an elegant little game. Uh, you could Rochambeau, which is also known as rock, paper, scissors, which can let, decide who would move forward. You could do a card draw, same thing. Um, Rochambeau, card draw, and dice roll are theoretically all simply chance approaches. Rochambeau, some people think you can play the player, sort of like poker. Um, and then physical skill. Let's say you want to design something for people at home, getting flabby during the quarantine. Maybe whoever does as many push-ups, that's how many spaces you move. Now you might feel like, I'm kind of done now. But it's a regular boring, simple game. And by adding more conflict, layers of conflict, it'll start to get more and more interesting. So can you think of a way to speed people up or slow people down. Um, in shoots and ladders, of course, we have ladders where you can jump way ahead and shoots that do quite like the opposite. Everything goes to shoot. Um, you can give somebody an extra turn or lose a turn, swap places and block. When I was a kid, I played Parcheesi all the time with my sister and everybody's trying to go all the way around and get to the middle and everybody has multiple pieces. Well, if you have two pawns, you can actually make a little blockade that stops the other pawn from moving past you. Suddenly they're stuck. It's a nice way to torture each other. So let's take a pause now. We've all just created a game, but what is a game? How is it that we already know exactly what it is? Well, Tracy Fullerton, again, in her game design workshop, calls it a closed formal system that engages players in structured conflict. That's all about the rules and resolves it to an unequal outcome, win, lose, first place, second place. And it's a dynamic system that supports interaction for an aesthetic goal. Aesthetic is a very particular word in game design. When you're talking about an aesthetic goal, you're often talking about fun or the feeling you get, uh, frustration, excitement, pleasure. Aesthetics will go into a little bit deeper. I love this particular definition. I think Bernard Schutz has nailed it. The voluntary attempt to overcome unnecessary obstacles. It kind of sums it up in a nutshell. So as we think about all these games, Game designers have this theory, which is called mechanics, dynamics, and aesthetics. See, I promised you would get back to aesthetics. 
It was originally a paper by Robin Hunicki, uh, one of the creators of Journey, Mark LeBlanc, and Robert Zubek. They're all very well-known game designers, but also academics. So when we talk about game mechanics, and we do talk about game mechanics all the time, what are we actually talking about? What is a game mechanic? And I think that uh, Calvin Ball is a great example where the game mechanic is the only permanent role in Calvin Ball is you can't play it the same way twice. Raf Koster, who wrote A Theory of Fun for Game Design, which you are reading or have read, uh, says game mechanics are rule-based systems simulations that facilitate and encourage the user to explore and learn the properties of their possibility space. Possibility space is a great phrase through the use of feedback mechanisms. So what are those four formal mechanics? What are those four formal elements? I'm very upset by this trailing S. Things like that make me crazy. But enough with fun facts like I hate orphans. Um, let's talk about the seven formal elements one by one. 